In this third podcast in the series, I want to explore how to work with a patient in psychic retreat. In order to do this, I'll first outline John Steiner's concept and then relate it to Melanie Klein's work on envy and gratitude. I also want to look at recent psychoanalytic work on shame. John Steiner describes the psychic retreat as providing the patient with an area of relative peace and protection from strain when meaningful contact with the analyst is experienced as threatening. It's not difficult to understand the need for transient withdrawal of this kind, but serious technical problems arise in patients who turn to a psychic retreat habitually, excessively and indiscriminately. In some analyses, particularly with borderline and psychotic patients, a more or less permanent residence in the retreat may be taken up and it is then that obstacles to development and growth arise. I would suggest that it is particularly this group of patients that we end up seeing in music therapy and it's particularly this group of patients that music psychotherapy can be most useful with. Shame. I can think of no better way to explain shame than by experiencing it a bit, by singing to you about it. Today I saw somebody who look just like you They walk like you do I thought it was you And as you turn the corner I call out your name I felt so ashamed Cause it wasn't you Wasn't you Everything is you. You are everything. Everything is you. You are everything. Everything is you. You are everything. And everything is you. Now, of course, I may have actually lost some listeners by doing that. And I may have lost the respect of others. If it's primarily music therapists listening to this podcast, then surely there's bound to be some narcissistic disturbance caused by the event. For instance, was I brave to sing that? Or was I arrogant? Was I in tune? Was I ridiculous with my fake transatlantic twang and reverb? For me, I have to manage my inadequacy and survive imagined withering judgment. So why might shame be so powerful? Well, let's look again at this song and see if we can't get some answers. I mean, it's surely the genius of pop music to describe universalities of human experience in a succinct way. And the main protagonist in the first verse of You Are Everything and Everything Is You describes somebody who is struggling with a cognitive and emotional shock that the target of their excitable love feelings finds no home in the facilitating environment because the object of those feelings has been lost and worse still has been replaced by a stranger giving rise to all kinds of primitive fear. Now we can talk about those love feelings in terms of desire but what about the desire to be loved to be known how do we support our belief in our own intrinsic value what Kleinian psychoanalysts describe as our infantile primary narcissistic omnipotence that the infant has but also that we all carry 
Where can that be acknowledged, accepted, celebrated? Francis Bruchek, writing in 1982 in the International Journal of Psychoanalysis in her piece Shame and its Relationship to Early Narcissistic Developments, takes this further and says that if shame can arise in contact with strangers, then it seems likely that shame can also arise in the infant's contacts with mother at those times when mother becomes a stranger to her infant. This happens when the infant is disappointed in his excited expectation that certain communicative and interactional behaviour will be forthcoming in response to his communicative readiness. At this moment, she becomes a different mother. And even a mother who is good enough can be a stranger to her infant at times. And this is not really surprising since the mother's moods, preoccupations, conflicts and defences will disturb her physiognomy and at time alter her established communication patterns. In the Scandinavian Psychoanalytic Review, The Origin of Shame and Its Vicissitudes, 1993, the authors describe how shame is a neglected area in the theory and practice of psychoanalysis, that it's much more important clinically and much more common than has been understood. It's often hidden and one must know how to find it and make it conscious in order to deal with it. When Melanie Klein revolutionised Freud's concept of the Oedipus complex, she re-situated this triangle of forces to a much earlier stage of psychic development. Whereas Freud had described a three-year-old's recognition of whole objects and his father as a rival for his mother's attention, Klein saw this operating in the children she studied as early as the second quarter of the first year of life, as the infant begins to struggle with a primitive part-object relation, particularly to the breast as an agent of sustenance, partly but not wholly under his control but also with the relationship this part object might have with other part objects introjected from experiences with the environment. The primitive relationship to the father, which Klein described in terms of the penis. Of course, we can't know how much validity there is in this conception because a four-month-old infant can't tell us. I would rather reframe this idea, I hope usefully, in these terms. That just as with the Freudian love triangle of the classical Oedipal scenario, Klein's early infant struggles with his caregiver's preoccupations, in other words, his mother's internal relationships. The fact that she has a mind, her own needs and her own emotional state are a potential threat to this relatively unintegrated infant in the same triangular configuration as Freud's later concept. I have already described the role of shame as the result of the failure of the infant's narcissism to be acknowledged, celebrated, understood, in other words, contained by the facilitating environment that the mother constitutes. But we also have to consider that in Klein's conception, other very early powerful and persistent feeling states may also come into being at this time. Envy, greed and guilt join shame and this original annihilatory anxiety that the infant has experienced from the beginning of their sense of self. Mm -hmm.